Werner Company, the world's leading manufacturer of climbing products, presents Werner Climbing Pro, a public service series designed to promote ladder safety through education. Welcome. Werner Company is proud to present you with the latest addition in our Climbing Pro safety training. This exclusive information is designed to keep professionals like you safe on the job. Be sure to visit WernerLadder.com for additional online training opportunities. In this program, we'll discuss one of the most important topics, ladder safety. There are a number of key elements to prevent climbing-related injuries and keep you safe on the job. First, we'll show you how to select the right ladder for your project. Then we'll teach you how to inspect and handle your ladder. And finally, we'll demonstrate common mistakes and show you the proper ways to use your ladder safely. So let's get started. Ladders selected and used correctly help you work in a safe, efficient, and more productive manner. Use common sense and always follow the safety instructions on the ladder before and while you climb. The first step in ladder safety is to choose the right ladder for the job. Assess the job site and the job at hand, then ask yourself, what am I trying to accomplish? How high will I climb? How much weight will the ladder have to support? To answer those questions, you need to know four factors to help determine the correct ladder for the job. Style, size, duty rating, and material. The most common types of ladders are step ladders and extension ladders. Werner offers a variety of styles within those categories that can help you work smarter, safer, and more efficiently. We'll discuss those in more detail later on. Now let's consider size. Choosing the right size ladder is just as important as the style. One of the most common and potentially dangerous mistakes is using a ladder that's either too short or too long. Did you know that the highest safe standing level on a step ladder is two steps down from the top? It's important to remember that a person's maximum safe reaching height is approximately four feet higher than the height of the ladder. Keep that in mind when choosing a size. Duty rating is also critical. Werner ladders are built to handle the demands of various applications. The duty rating should take into account both the total weight that will be on the ladder and the specific job at hand. Many professional grade ladders are yellow or orange, so remember, you need to check the ID label for duty rating. Duty rating is the maximum allowable weight on the ladder. It is the sum of the person's weight plus the weight of any tools, clothing, and material. Also consider the variety of personnel that will be using these ladders. This total weight must not exceed the duty rating. There are five ANSI-recognized duty ratings. 200 pound, type three. 225 pound, type two. 250 pound, type one. 300 pound, type 1A. And finally, a 375 pound, type one double A. The duty rating is clearly marked on all Werner ladder side rails. You'll also find the model number of the ladder, the highest standing level, size, and safety instructions as well. Carefully read all labels and follow safety procedures and work practices. Choosing the right material is the final element in selecting a ladder. Fiberglass ladders have become a leading choice due to their durability, strength, and suitability for a wide range of applications. In addition to being available in step and extension ladders, the side rails are electrically non-conductive making fiberglass a good choice when working around electricity. And if you're working in highly corrosive environments, an extension ladder with fiberglass rungs is also available. Aluminum ladders are lightweight, strong, durable, and corrosion resistant. However, because aluminum readily conducts electrical current, these ladders should never be used around electricity. Remember, selecting the right ladder is the first step in ladder safety. Now that you've made the proper ladder selection, the next step is to inspect your ladder. Most injuries can be avoided simply by taking the time to thoroughly inspect your equipment before using it. Never climb a ladder without carefully looking for missing, damaged, or loose components. Be sure that the ladder is in good working condition, free of any spills, drips, or other debris. Also, check to make sure that the labels on your ladder are in place and readable. When inspecting your step ladder, Begin at the bottom and work your way up. First, look at the feet and be sure the foot pads are properly attached and are not worn, torn, or missing. Next, inspect the ladder rails. For a fiberglass ladder, 
make sure the rails are not excessively worn, damaged, or split. For an aluminum step ladder, be sure there is no damage or bowing to the rails. Do this for both the front and back of your step ladder. Look at the steps of your ladder to make sure that they are not bent or damaged and that the connections are tight. Also, clean any debris or other substances from the steps. Finally, check to see if your ladder can open and close smoothly, making sure the spreaders lock securely and all four feet sit firmly on the ground. If you discover any of these problems, tag the ladder and take it out of service immediately. The rule of thumb is always, when in doubt, tag it and throw it out. Use the same process when inspecting an extension ladder. Begin at the bottom and work your way to the top. Closely examine the feet to make sure the foot pads are not missing or torn. Then inspect the shoes for damage and check to see if they move freely. Then look at the rails and rungs of your ladder to ensure that they are not bent, bowed, cracked, split, or torn. Carefully examine the locks of your extension ladder to make sure they're clear of any debris and lock easily over the rung. Check to be sure that the flippers on the locks are in place and are not damaged. Finally, look at the rope on your extension ladder. Check to see that it is properly secured to the fly section of the ladder and make sure that it is not frayed, worn, or torn and that it glides easily through the pulley. Never climb on a damaged ladder. Remember, when in doubt, tag it and throw it out. Now let's move on to proper handling. Improper transporting and handling can cause damage to the ladder. When transporting ladders, use a truck or van rack with proper restraints so they don't rattle or vibrate during transfer, as this could damage the ladders. Be extra careful moving ladders. Make sure you don't drop a ladder when loading or unloading it from a vehicle. And never drag it across the ground. Do not carry an extension ladder in its extended position. For longer ladders, use two people to make it easier to carry. Keep ladders in good condition, clean spills or drips, and always remove any slippery materials. Protect ladders from excessive heat, weather, and corrosive materials. Lightly lubricate moving parts with silicone spray. Be careful not to get lubricant on the standing or gripping surfaces. Finally, when storing ladders, provide proper support and do not store other materials on top. Now that we've discussed the proper handling methods, let's talk about a few safe climbing rules that apply to both step and extension ladders. Always face the ladder when climbing or descending and maintain a firm grip. Climb carefully and slowly. Avoid excessive turning and twisting. Make sure you always face the ladder while working. Consider the types of tools you'll be using when climbing a ladder. Will you need a helper, bucket, and rope to hoist them up? If you use a tool belt, be careful your tools don't catch on the ladder while climbing. Never climb on a damaged ladder. Remember, when in doubt, tag it and throw it out. A common mistake is overreaching. Overreaching can cause you to lose your balance or tip the ladder, which may result in an injury. Keep your body centered on the ladder. A good rule of thumb is never let your belt buckle pass beyond either ladder rail. Instead, get off the ladder and move it closer to your work area. Another solution is to choose a different ladder that may be better suited for the job. One of the most important things to remember is to never use an aluminum step or extension ladder near electricity. In that instance, you should always use a fiberglass ladder because of its non-conductive side rails. You may find that a step ladder would be the most useful way to get your job done. They come in a wide variety of styles such as single-sided, tripod, twin step, platform, and extension trestle ladders. So let's go through the proper usage of a step ladder. But remember, before you climb, Inspect your ladder every time. First, open it. Lock the spreaders and ensure that the ladder footing is level and solid. Also, secure your work area to inhibit cross traffic, 
especially in and around doorways. For a job that calls for consistent and predictable reach, a platform ladder may be your best bet. Platform ladders allow you to have a greater range of movement that ultimately helps reduce worker fatigue. In addition, the safety guardrail encourages proper use. And the large platform gives you a safe and stable base to work from and reduces user fatigue. If your job requires two people to access a ladder at the same time, a twin step ladder is what you'll need. This ladder style offers two climbing sides and can safely hold two workers at the same time. It comes in a variety of sizes, including smaller ones for lower applications. Remember, the duty rating refers to the load per side of the ladder. When using the twin step ladder, the platform ladder, or any other step ladder, it's important to follow these proper usage guidelines. Never attempt to cut anything on a ladder. Only use a properly equipped ladder or a sawhorse. It's extremely important to never move or walk a ladder when you're on it. Always step off and move the ladder. If you need to adjust the ladder throughout the course of the job, you should remove your tools or use a proper accessory to secure them in place. Many ladder tops are built to handle a variety of tools for this purpose. Also, you should never stand on the back of a step ladder. If two people need to be on the same ladder, you must use a twin step model. Never stand, sit, or straddle the top of a step ladder. And never use a step ladder when getting on or off a roof. The highest safe standing level on a step ladder is two steps down from the top. If your work area cannot be safely reached, you'll need either a taller ladder or a different style of ladder that's more suited to the job. Step ladder should always be used in the open position, never closed. Instead, use an extension ladder. Now that we've thoroughly covered step ladders, let's look at the proper setup for extension ladders. First, lay the ladder down with the end caps pointing away from the building, with the base section on top of the fly section. The base section is the section with the feet. Before raising the ladder, check for overhead power lines, even if you're working inside. Walk the ladder against the base of the building or another secure object. If walking isn't an option, have someone block the bottom of the ladder. Now raise the ladder to its vertical position and move the base of the ladder away from the building until it's positioned at the proper angle. Position yourself between the ladder and the building. Face the ladder and grip the ladder rail on the base section. Grip and sturdy the ladder, keeping it vertical, while carefully raising the fly section using the rope and pulley. Extend the ladder to the desired height, and then allow the ladder locks to properly engage. Lean the ladder against the building and establish the correct setup angle. The setup angle of an extension ladder is critical. The base of the ladder should be positioned one foot away from the building for every four feet of ladder length as measured from the base to the upper support point. This four to one ratio is essential to your safety. Placing an extension ladder base too close to the building can cause the ladder to tip over backwards. Placing the ladder too far away from its vertical support point may cause the ladder to slip out at the bottom. To ensure a correct setup, stand in front of the ladder. Place your toes against the bottom of the side rails. Stand erect with your arms straight out. The palms of your hands should touch the top of the rung nearest to shoulder level. A diagram, as well as an instruction label on the side rail of the ladder, illustrates this point. Before climbing, check to see that the two rung locks are fully engaged and the fly section is in front of the base on the climber's side. The ladder's feet should be on a solid, level, and non-slippery ground. The slip-resistant shoes are designed to pivot to compensate for certain ground conditions. Use spur plates on penetrable surfaces to ensure good footing. 
solid footing is required for safe ladder use. Secure the bottom of the extension ladder or have someone hold the ladder for you whenever possible. When working on uneven ground, use a leveling device that meets OSHA requirements. Some ladders feature a built-in leveling device as well as other leveling accessories that can be installed in the field on one or all of your ladders. Be sure both end caps or top contact points are resting securely against the structure. The upper support should have at least 12 inches of solid support available on both sides of the ladder. The highest safe standing level on an extension ladder is four rungs from the top. If you're going to step onto a roof from a ladder, be sure that you extend the ladder three feet above the roof's edges. Extending the ladder too far above the roof's edge could cause the ladder to slide or kick out. Tie off the extension ladder to the roof or rigid structure to reduce ladder movement. Absolutely never attempt to move or reposition your ladder while standing on it. And never attempt to adjust it while working from above. Pulling or readjusting the ladder from the roof could unlock the fly section and make it extremely dangerous to climb back down. If you want to reposition your ladder, always climb back down and reposition your ladder while standing on the ground. Never set up your ladder at too shallow or too steep of an angle. When setting up an extension ladder, be sure to follow the 4 to 1 ratio procedure we previously discussed. When using an extension ladder while working on a roof, it's important to remember the following rules. If you're accessing the roof, the ladder should extend 3 feet above the roof line. If you are not accessing the roof, it's okay for the ladder to extend one foot above the roof edge. Never use your ladder on uneven ground. In order to make sure your ladder is stable, use a proper leveling device. Once again, remember that you should never use an aluminum extension ladder near electricity. Instead, use a fiberglass ladder and maintain a safe distance from electrical lines. There are also many accessories that can be used with extension ladders to increase the safety of utility workers. Some can be installed in the field and others come factory installed. Cable hooks help to prevent your ladder from sliding off an overhead wire or cable. V-rungs are used to create a secure resting point for the ladder on the pole. The ladder cinch is a tie-down accessory used to secure the ladder to the utility pole and can be attached before you climb. Ladder lashes are another tie-down accessory for the top of your ladder and can be adjusted for poles of all diameters. Levelers allow you to safely use your ladder on uneven ground. Some levelers adjust automatically, while others are adjusted manually. As you've seen, extension ladders are an excellent choice for many jobs that require safe operation at higher distance from the ground. Ladders can provide a safe and efficient way to work, but it must be the right ladder for the job. To maximize your safety, consider style, size, duty rating, and material when selecting a ladder. And always inspect a ladder before using it. Never climb a damaged ladder and ensure the proper setup and stability of the ladders you're using in the workplace. The information presented in this program is designed to help you use ladders more safely and productively. Always think before you climb. Use good common sense and remember, proper ladder selection and job site assessment is key to safe climbing. Whether you're six or 60 feet in the air, the last thing you want to think about is the safety of your ladder. That's why at Werner, it's the first thing we think about. With over 60 years of product design and testing, there's no doubt why the pro prefers the Werner brand. And through innovation and cutting edge technology, we are the world leader in climbing equipment, which means you can count on Werner for the most complete line of professional grade step and extension ladders, planks, stages, and scaffolding. Werner, the number one brand in professional climbing equipment. If you have any questions about these or other Werner products, please visit our website to learn more. WernerLadder.com offers additional resources and several other online training modules. Visit WernerLadder.com today and invest in your safety.